Peter, in trying to look for fundamental principles in philosophy of biology, the uh, communications, the kinds of languages that are used at different levels of the biological hierarchy, from the language that genes communicate together to the fact that you and I are, are speaking, are there these common principles of communications and language that will help us uh, under, uh, understand these uh, organizing principles? This has been one of the most exciting recent areas uh, in the field for me. I think things have really made progress here and have made progress in a way that involves the interaction between work from biologists and, and work from philosophers. I think it's, it's, it's a good case. What's happened in particular is the development of a collection of models, a framework for modeling, which is sometimes called the sender-receiver framework, uh, in which the there's an attempt to understand the mutual shaping of behaviors on each side of a relationship mm -hmm. of sign use, basically, uh, where you know, these guys are doing something that is perceived by these guys, and the actions of one or both have consequences for both sides, and evolution is shaping some kind of coordination or some kind of miscoordination, some other kind of relationship between the two. So the idea of trying to give general principles for describing the co-evolution of sender and receiver behaviors, it's been enormously interesting and fruitful mm. in recent years. What are some examples? Yeah, so bacteria do it. Um, there are sender-receiver systems in bacteria where chemicals are being emitted by bacteria for all sorts of reasons. Mm -hmm. And some of them are picked up by other bacteria and used as informative. For example, uh, bacteria can learn how many other kinds of bacteria of, the simil of a similar kind are, are in a vicinity. This is called quorum sensing. It's as if the bacteria <laughs> are asking, do we form a quorum? Do uh -huh. we have enough of our type to form a and quorum? And then they'll have a different kind of behavior one way or the other? Yeah, if there's, enough, if there's enough together for some collective behavior to be worth doing, then you do that behavior. If you're on your own, there, there might be no point in doing that behavior. Mm -hmm. So social coordination exists in bacteria. And this sender-receiver duality is present there. Um, simple animals, plants, bee dances are, of course, a celebrated case where you have a send-receive coordination. And that, that's a good case to think about because it, illumin it illuminates the role of common interest in sender-receiver models. The, the, the different worker bees in a hive have a lot of it common interest. They ha they, they're part of a common project of, of feeding the young and keeping the hive healthy, the colony healthy, and so on. So that's a situation where one kind of sender-receiver pattern arises. In mating systems, the interests are not always quite so neatly aligned, and you get different kinds of you get different kinds of relationships arising. Something I've been very interested in is asking, at what point does communication break down, fall apart, because there's not enough common interest to keep it going? Uh, this has been a very interesting modeling project. Example of that? Well, the, the work I've done on it is mostly in a context of abstract modeling, where we just specify, we imagine a sender and a receiver who have particular interests, either not in common or in common. We tweak each side and ask, in what circumstances will they keep talking to each other? And in mm -hmm. what circumstances will mm -hmm. they fall away? And the result that we, the main results that we got were that there is a very, a pretty neat relationship between the amount of communication and the amount of common interest, the amount of agreement on what you want done. But at the lower end of the scale, a surprising, you know, in a surprising way, tiny flickers of communication can remain in situations where we would have thought there's no way mm. that the interests of the parties are too misaligned. So in this sender-receiver, this relationship, are there thresholds that are in play? One context where you see some interesting relationships between degrees of common interest is alarm calls. Quite a few animals give alarm calls when they mm. see predators. And there does seem to be some cases where deceptive alarm calls are given in order to manipulate other members mm -hmm. of the group. So the question arises, when do I stop believing the alarm calls that I'm hearing? Mm 